Hey guys, uh, time for another uh, video of Meteor, Understanding the Weird Parts. Um, so, I mean, this time I just want to talk about something that's probably the least weird in Meteor. Um, this is publications. Uh, I want to talk about how they work, uh, why they work, uh, how to use them. Uh, specifically, I'd like to talk about some changes that I'd, I'd like to make to them. And then maybe I'll, I'll sort of touch on those changes uh, a little bit afterwards. Um, and talk about sort of the next video, just very slightly. So this, this should be brief. So briefly, what, what is a publication? So a publication is something that resides purely on the server. It is Meteor sending DDP messages to the client that basically say things that have happened. These messages can take, I think, three forms um, w with notable exceptions. They can be added, they can be changed, and they can be removed. So it sends a lot of added messages in the beginning. That's to get all the data, and then anything time or anything uh, or any time things change, it sends change messages or remove messages or added messages depending on what changes. So this is nice. Um, you don't send uh, all the data each time over the wire. This you know it decreases your latency and it also um, it also reduces the amount of data that you've got over the wire. It's good modern practice. Um, that makes sense. How do they work? Um, so, uh, I mean, you, you've sort of seen the basics of, of publications. Generally speaking, for, for a simple publication, what it's going to look like is a name, a function, and then returning a cursor. So what is a cursor? Uh, a cursor is anything you get out of a collection.find that, that returns a cursor. Um, and it's simple. It's, it's super simple. You basically say, let's let's look in our list collection and let's find all of the lists such that the user ID does not exist, um, and you only want these types of fields. Um, I, I'm not going to go over this sort of stuff. This is basic meteor stuff. Um, there's one slight thing that I will go over. Um, there are, I guess two slight things I want to go over. So one, this this can't be an arrow function, uh, if you guys know, because you need this. Why do you need this? It's because it's got all the juicy publication stuff. Unfortunately, this is sort of bad design on the Meteor folks. Um, and hopefully in, the, in later versions, they'll be able to change this. This, huh, that's a pun. Oh. And um, so what we've got right now is, uh, is this.userid. So, so you can only access the user ID in a publication through this.userid. You can't access it actually through Meteor. Okay. The only thing that I really want to address here is that instead of using this dot ready down here, what you can technically do is you can return an empty list. Um, I like this. This is a little bit better um, for for sort of new people on the team. It's not as confusing. What is this dot ready? That seems a little bit sketchy. Um, and what what you can generally do in all of these things is return a list and and just sort of make it common convention that you that you return a list uh, in the first place. Um, so this is a cursor, so you, want, you just want to return this cursor or something. So, so you could do this. Um, this is uh, let me see something going. Um, so, you, so you could do this. This is this 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 could be your sort of SOP. Um, this is what I like to do. Uh, it, it's kind of up to you guys. Um, so if we if we wanted to actually subscribe to this just to show you that it's it's real, um, meteor dot subscribe to list.private. Okay, so we, we, we can subscribe. Um, oops, still loading. So anyways, um, so, so you'll be able to subscribe to these things sort of no problem. Um, once we're actually able to subscribe. Okay, here we go. Server started, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we're not going to really get any data from this, just so you know. Um, but we can subscribe. Uh, we can check out our list and do find one. It's undefined. We've, we've got, I made, I made no private instances. Um, and we're not even logged in, so it should return this sort of empty list in the first place. I like empty lists. Uh, lists make a little bit more sense. Um, since you could just be returning lists of, of cursors anyway. Um, the changes that I've made, just, just so you guys know, is in the list, I, I've published list as a global object. 
just so it's making it a little bit easier for me. Um, and down here, I've gone ahead and, here we go. So I, I've gone ahead and uh, taken off the natural subscribes in the, in the layout to both uh, list.public and, and list.private. It's not too important here, but I just, I found it would be easier. Okay, so, so that's, that's publications, super easy. You return a cursor or a list of cursors. Um, those cursors get dumped into a collection. Now, what collection did they get dumped into? In this case, they came from a collection in the first place. So they get dumped back into that collection. One thing that I think people are, are sort of surprised with is that uh, they, they don't know that the, the collections declared on the server and the collections declared on the client are completely different entities. They're described or they're declared using the exact same code, but that code does completely different things. On the client, it acts as a, as a local mini Mongo store that is able to populate with fields based on these, these DDP uh, messages. On the server, it acts somewhat similar as a local store, but it populates through, through actually getting um, data from, from MongoDB. Um, so, so it fills into the exact same place that it came from, which, which is nice. It's conceptually simple. It, it reduces the amount of code. But then when it comes to complex things, like this publish that I've, I've been using up here for a very long time, people get very confused. This, this looks very foreign. Um, so what, what does it do? So what this does is it publishes to something called counts, something of random ID and the number that you passed into it. So if you want to do an advanced publication, you need to be using the native, the underlying data structures, the underlying DDP uh, protocol that, that media provides you. So you've got you know, three things. You've got changed, you've got added, and then you've got removed. Um, you can see these things right here. Uh, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on changed, added, and removed, but suffice it to say, added takes the collection name that you want to dump the data into, it takes an ID, and it takes an object that you want to dump into that collection. Changed takes the collection name, it takes an ID, and then it takes whatever you wanna change. So this is, this is very similar to whatever the set in, in, in Mongo will be. And then finally, this dot removed, it takes collection name and it takes an ID and it will remove that from the collection. Okay, so, so how, does this, how does this work? So when, when you begin, when the publication begins, you can go ahead and you can do some stuff. You can add, you can change, you can remove, you can do as much as you want. And then eventually you need to say, hey, on the client, things are ready. I've stopped, I've made enough changes such that you can actually look at that stuff. And we've, we've explored this in the past. Um, if you delay the ready, you can't even see that data. Um, but after you're done with ready, you can continue to add data. And this is, this is kind of like the cool thing about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do meteor set uh, interval. Okay, I wanna make a function, I think. What will this function do? Okay, let's increment stuff. So I've got more. Um, this is a let more equal uh, num. Okay. Uh, more plus plus. Okay. Self dot added. Um, more. Where do we want to add more to? We want to add it to the collection counts. What do we want to add it to, or what's the ID it's gonna be? It's gonna have a random ID, doesn't really matter. Okay. So what we say is that after each interval, and the interval can be um, one second. So every second, what the server is going to do is it's gonna send out, it's gonna send out a new chunk of information. It's gonna send out an added DDP message that says, hey, I'm for the collection counts. Here's my ID and here's my data. And counts is gonna to respond to that. There's one more thing I wanted to do. Um, no need to, we'll, 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 we'll stave off on this for the moment. Okay, and so that's, that's what it wants to do. Um, Now I'm gonna sort of show you how this works. So uh, this looks good. We need to go back over here. Um, so currently we're subscribed to 44 up here. 
Okay. So we subscribe to 44. If we do a count, uh, count, 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 uh, dot find, dot fetch, we'll see, whoa, we've got a lot of stuff. Why do we have a lot of stuff in here? This is 76. We've been counting for a very long time. 56 up to 76. So let's say we, instead of wanting to describe to 44, we want to describe to 4400, okay? We go ahead, we subscribe to 4400. What happens? If you go counts.find.fetch, what do you expect to see? Oh, we expect to see some stuff. Sorry. We expect to see some stuff. Oh, yep, 4100, 400. Now yeah, that looks good, that looks really great. That looks super, that looks great. Um, what? Hmm. Hmm. Derm da derm derm. Derm da derm derm. The, the problem here is that, well, a slight problem is that, um, is that this collection shouldn't have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have stopped here. Hold on one second. If you go into log uh, more, this, this is actually rather interesting. Um, something that I, that I kind of didn't expect. So if we actually we actually log this out, um, so once we rebuild the server, uh, all all the collection stuff will, will sort of go away. Um, so let me just stick this over here, and let me stick this over here. Um, so we subscribe to forty four hundred. Um, the thing is, though, if we subscribe to forty four, what do you think happens? Oddly enough. We get both. We get both 44 and 40, uh, 400 continuing to count up. Uh, the counter counter continues to go, even though uh, in our subscription we, we no longer recognize it. Um, so there's two things to note here. One thing to note is that subscriptions and publications have handles, right? If I subscribe to something, I'm, I'm given a, this, this handle. And if I destroy this or resubscribe to the same thing, I get a new handle on that on that publication. And, and in such, I, I won't actually be able to see the previous material. So if, if our previous material, if our previous publication is still running, which it was, as we can see, it, it's going to continue to run like this, we, we can't actually see what happens to it. So that's the small caveat. What, what you need to do here is you need to either have multiple publications um, or have a publication that's very complex. Uh, if, if you want to be doing this sort of like subscribe uh, based on user actions or subscribe based on some sort of interval. Um, the second thing, though, is that if you had made this publication, this sort of meteor set interval, your server would crash like nobody's business. You get 15, 17, 500 client connections, and then your server would have all of these set intervals, all pinging, going, continuing to go, all while they're actually still there. Um, so what do, you, what do you need to do? The, the final thing that you need to do, the final sort of method that, that collections or that publications give to you is uh, self.onStop. Um, so and you, you can sort of see this right here. I guess, I guess you could have known this. Um, and so I, I think this is one of the reasons why it's, why it's super, you know, quote unquote low level is because people often forget to do like the simple stuff. So we get meteor dot clear interval, like really useful. <laughs> this, this is like, I've never used this sort of stuff before, except for in, in sort of, um, uh, ooh, ooh. Uh, const interval ID equals meteor dot set interval. We'll go ahead, we'll clear this interval ID, okay? We'll continue to load more, else we won't know what's really happening here. Um, so the on stop is where you need to clean up all of your logic. It's where you need to do your garbage collection, quote unquote, um, or else things could get really, really messy. Um, yeah. So, so that's that's all there is to publications. There's those. There's the basics. You know, you can you can return either a um, either either uh, a list of cursors or cursor itself. Or what you can do is you can do these uh, self.added, self.removed, all these types of methods that, that also accompany it. Um, things to remember is it dumps into a specific collection. If that collection is not declared on the client, 
you're never going to see that data. Um, sure, the publication will still run and the client will still say, oh, okay, I'll remember these messages for you. But it's still, it will never actually have that data and it won't actually allow your, your users to see it. And then the second thing that I'd say that I want to remind you of is that when you're using these uh, really low level sort of, sort of meteor stuff here, be very careful. Um, you, you can write code that really can shoot yourself in the foot. Any, any sort of basic vanilla publish, this is never going to shoot you in the foot. I mean, you, you can be a little bit ha like hampered by it, but this sort of stuff will shoot you in the foot. So let's, let's go back over here. We're, we're already at 90, yada yada. If we go over to 4,000, um, we go ahead, we clear that out, and we no longer have that set interval. So, so we're, we're being kosher. Um, so that's kind of everything that I want to talk about in terms of publish. Um, now I want to talk about some of the problems. Publish is messy. It, it has the same problems that, that methods used to have before we had validated method. A validated method was was a you know it's a godsend. Um, publishes you can't uh, import them anywhere. These sort of uh, names are just random strings that you import from the middle of nowhere. Validation uh, happens only on the server. So if you subscribe to something using a number where you were supposed to use a string or a string, then it will just throw an error on the server. You won't be able to check on the client. Um, there's also two more things that, that, are, that are super important about this. Um, the, one of these things is, is this dot and block, which I will talk about in, in the future. And then the next thing is, is sort of um, composite um, collections <coughs> or composite publishes, um, which I will also talk a little bit about in the future. Probably not even next uh, video, but I'll, but I'll at least show you a little bit of it. Um, but there you go. Uh, next lesson, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of show you guys um, the basics of, of what, what a, a package that I've actually made called Validated Publish, uh, which, which is something I think everyone should be using. Um, I'll show you the basics of that, how, how you use it, why it actually is, is really awesome, is why it's extremely similar to, to validated um, methods. Um, yes, uh, I hope you guys have, have, have learned a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit of the internals of, of publications, if you guys are more curious about that sort of stuff like the, the real nitty gritty details, I would love to, to tell you about it. But at least I've sort of shown you the, the high level nitty gritty details as well as uh, the, the sort of nitty gritty uh, how to. Okay, um, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, as always. It's always a pleasure, never a chore, and join me next time.